For many followers of Jesus, who like me also love science, there's a really difficult question. How can the creation story from the Bible be true when science, that is the vast majority of scientists, say it isn't? I think I have an explanation which I will describe shortly, but first I want to clarify why it's needed. I'm hoping this video will provide a solution for those who are having trouble believing the Bible's creation story. We've all heard about creation scientists and their theories. They tend to latch on to obscure pieces of information and try to prove everything from those tiny points. But so often I've seen how a scientist can easily point out their errors in logic and fact, and then all credibility is lost. I know the Bible is completely in its own category in terms of being an archaeological artefact. No other document in history comes close to it in the number of copies or the correlation between copies. And it's the Word of God, so I can't just ignore parts of it that I don't like. But I don't want a blind faith where I just refuse to accept any contrary evidence. I need to somehow reconcile rationally what science says with my own experiences of God. I recognise that such experiences can easily be false, so I try to critique everything I can. For example, I've seen the famous British mentalist Darren Brown using tricks to convince a group of people that they'd had a spiritual encounter with God when they clearly hadn't. They were ready to become converts. People, even me, can be fooled or we can even fool ourselves. But I'm still totally convinced God is real and the Bible is his guide for us. I think we should believe what it says, unless there's a very good reason not to. Most Christians just ignore the creation parts of the Bible and instead believe what science says. They might say it's not supposed to be understood literally, or they might play with time and say that six days of creation were instead billions of years. The big problem with this is if you decide to ignore or adjust parts of the Bible, then you're more likely to ignore other parts that you don't like. There are other believers who just stubborn, stubbornly say science is wrong, no matter what the arguments are. But trying to prove science is wrong is very difficult. There's just so much information and understanding required that it's beyond most believers. And there's so much misinformation around too. They're well-meaning, but inevitably they end up repeating facts that are now just wrong, such as saying there are big missing links in the fossil record, or saying that entropy means it's impossible for a genetic mutation to result in evolving upwards, or saying there's not enough sediment on the ocean floor. I personally think the process of science largely keeps it on the quest for truth, with the process of observation, proposing explanations, questioning preconceptions, and the publishing of peer-reviewed findings. So I just think most people must end up being turned off or turned away from God, but it's just so unnecessary. So I'd like to propose a way we can reconcile all this, a way we can understand the biblical creation story without having to contradict science. I'm not a Bible scholar or a preacher, but it seems so obvious and simple to me that it just feels right. But weirdly, I can't find this anywhere on, online. I can find similar ideas, but they're all significantly different. I'm open and prepared for anyone who's more knowledgeable to prove me wrong or suggest where I might be misguided, so please comment and tell me what you think. So here it is. Let's imagine two stories. The first is the science story of the universe and our world and our place in it. Just as science currently describes it, stretching back from now back to the formation of Earth 4.5 billion years ago, and all the way back to the Big Bang some 14 billion years ago. And now imagine a second story that the Bible would have us believe. But let's assume that everything is exactly the same as the first story after that point in time, some 6,000 years ago, 
when God created the universe. Our assumption is that everything is the same means that any evidence a scientist discovers will be consistent with the first story. I think God, or more precisely Jesus, created the universe around 6,000 years ago. In six days, as described, but, and here's the point, he created it already old, billions of years old. Or if you prefer, he created it to appear old. The big hint is that the Bible says he created Adam as a man and not a baby. So Adam was created old. I think Adam would have had all of the normal signs of a man of his age living in the world of 6,000 years ago. He would have had scars and a belly button, for example. God created him like that, not over 20 years, but just during one day. In the same way, he could have created the world with the appearance of some 4.5 billion years of age. He could have created it, and then the whole universe, atom for atom, as if there had been a big bang and evolution. Light from distant stars could have been created already travelling to us so that we can see them now, even though the stars have actually died ages ago. I think if you would have cut down one of the trees in the Garden of Eden, it would have had growth rings, the normal number for a tree that size. And without those, could you even call it a tree? The universe and everything else could have been created in the same way. It makes perfect sense to me that God creates in a way that's consistent with his own natural laws that govern us now. This is just another way in which his creation is perfect. He gives us the ability to understand these natural laws through science and hence learn the history of everything back to a Big Bang or whatever the start was. So everything less than 6,000 years ago, 6,000 years old, is then exactly what actually happened. And everything over 6,000 years ago is just as God made it appear. Would this even be any more difficult for God? He created everything out of nothing. He stands outside of time and he can see it all. It's not like us being stuck in the current moment trying to figure out what went before and what lies ahead. When science describes something that's billions of years old, I consider it to be a completely correct description of how God made it appear. So no matter what science learns in future, it won't disagree with that creation story. If on the other hand, God didn't follow these natural laws and just created everything brand new, then logically, one day science could eventually find evidence of that difference and then prove there was a creator. After that, we wouldn't even need faith to believe in God, and I don't think he wants that. So what about the fossil record? Did God create those in six days? I've got two theories here. Either he created it during the six days, because he stands outside time and knew what was going to happen. Or he created it as a result of the curse of the original sin of Adam and Eve. Maybe the latter sounds more correct biblically. But I don't really understand how a world without death would have even worked for long. If it was the former and the fossil record was put there in the first six days, then rather than that being an indication of death, it's just the appearance of death. So it doesn't necessarily conflict with that introduction of death at original sin. Some creation scientists would like to say that the fossils came from Noah's flood but I can't believe science would not have discovered that already. Just the fact that everything would have to have been mixed together instead of in layers based on history, to me, makes that theory unlikely. And what about evolution? I think that what science says happened probably matches the evidence that God left. So in that way, it's correct science. The science behind evolution has actually proved to be very successful in that it describes the evidence and makes predictions which have subsequently been proved true. 
It's also been verified in many other disciplines, such as the fossil record, paleontology, geology, comparative anatomy, geographic distribution, and most convincingly in genetics. The truth is, God made us 6,000 years ago. But the science of evolution is correct also because it matches how God made everything. We can have our cake and eat it too. What about the distribution of people on Earth? God must have created more people than just Adam and Eve, even though Adam was first. In Genesis 1 it talks about creating man in a generic sense. And then in Genesis 2 it goes back and talks about creating Adam as the first man from clay and then later creating Eve from Adam's rib in the Garden of Eden. He must have created men other than Adam outside the garden. Presumably after he created Adam, maybe later the same day, or perhaps as part of the curse of the original sin. It says that when Cain left his parents, he went to live with other people. So the other people obviously must have been created sometime after that original sin. So somewhere between the creation of Adam and the sin, God must have created everyone else. And for my theory to work, they must have been distributed around the world in the same way that science would describe for 6,000 years ago. So what about intelligent design? Personally, I think it's a misguided attempt to defend the Bible by searching for any areas that can be found for which there's no good scientific explanation yet. I agree that they do propose some interesting discussion points, and they seem to be very specific niches of science. The big problem is that if science does eventually find an explanation for any of those, it will degrade intelligent design as a theory. And by extension, it'll degrade the truth of the Bible if they're using it to defend the Bible. I tend to agree with the scientists and I think religion and science should be taught as two separate subjects that are largely independent. Also I think intelligent design's central premise that evolution is just another theory and that intelligent design is an equivalent scientific alternative is just unforgivably misleading to science students. Now, I've never heard my idea preached from any pulpit or found anything on the internet. The closest I've found is a theory called Young Earth Creationism, but the significant difference there is where I say Earth is 6,000 years old but made to appear old. They say Earth is actually 6,000 years old and should look 6,000 years old. And if there is any science that says it's older, then that science must be wrong. Effectively, they're saying that God created everything as brand new. So they say Adam would have no belly button and trees wouldn't have growth rings, for example, which to me just seems weird. I don't know why God would make these first things look different to all the ones that were going to follow. And they also say that God would have created light already traveling from distant stars to us, but that seems like they're creating a sign of age that isn't consistent with their creating everything new. So, I don't know, they seem to have it both ways. Now, does all this really matter? I don't know. I just get annoyed when Christians say that scientists are all wrong. And I think people may be turned off Christianity because they don't want to believe in something that seems untrue. So does my theory mean that God's trying to deceive us? I don't think so. He just creates in such a perfect manner that it's consistent and in line with his own natural laws. So science will never find an inconsistency, and so we'll always need faith to believe in God. So getting back to Noah again, that's an example of a difficult story to believe. Um, I'm not sure, but maybe it's supposed to be read like a simplified story rather than literal. I think the Bible often is written in a way that's understandable to the very young as well as to more advanced thinkers who can study it for their whole lifetime and still find more to learn. It's a bit like how we were taught at school about the structure of the atom. 
when we were young, we were told atoms were the smallest things that you could break something down to. That's kind of like the level of the Noah story when you first read it. Later, we discover at school that there's a nucleus and there are electrons in that atom. And then we learn that the electrons fly about in concentric shells around the nucleus. And even later, we learn that the electrons are kind of more of a probability cloud and that there are all sorts of smaller things, such as the Higgs boson. In the same way, the Bible reveals more and more as you study it and learn. Anyway, that's my theory. So tell me what you think of how I've reconciled the Bible with science. I've been mulling over this for quite some time, and it still feels right to me, but I'm open to other arguments. It's not central to my faith, because creation is just one of those we'll probably never know type areas. But it's also an area that's just too big for me to ignore. Maybe there's some loophole I haven't considered yet. But I hope this video will be of help to some people.